All right, and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube if you're watching this later for our next deck, Grixis Legends. Had a lot of fun playing this deck the other day, and it felt pretty good, and so I want to try it again. A couple questions. Isn't for Bolas too much? I don't think so. Bolas is basically the strongest card in the deck, and even even though it's a legendary creature, um, it's just incredibly good. Like the, Whenever you play it, your opponent's going to have to kill it, and so it's it's nice having another one. Uh, kind of thing, uh, but it's it is so strong. I mean, I guess Niv Mizzet's maybe the best card, but it's it's that combination there. Basically, what we have going on here. So for for those of you that haven't seen the deck before, what we have going on here is we're basically playing a Yogmoss Vile Offering deck. So in order to enable Yogmoss Vile Offering, we need to be able to have a legendary creature or Planeswalker on the battlefield in able in order to cast this, which is why you see all of these legendary creatures and everything between the Lazav, Squee, Judith, and then these Planeswalkers and everything. Um, and uh, also with Yagmas File Offering, so it's it's basically destroy one creature or Planeswalker, and then it does the third the third chapter of the Eldest Reborn, where you get to put a creature or Planeswalker from any graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. So it's like Ravenous Chupacabra plus Eldest Reborn, it's third chapter, all in one. Um, uh, no, I mean, it says says that right there in, in black. You may cast a legendary sorcery only if you control a legendary creature or planeswalker. So you cannot just have a search for Escanta um, on the battlefield for that. Um, but anyway, uh, another question here is why not uh, Karn's Temporal Sundering? Um, while I do, I do like Karn's Temporal Sundering overall, um, it's just it's pretty expensive of a spell to play. Um you know, with it being six mana and everything, and I don't think it really improves the deck too much. There's a lot of times where you just get stuck with, like, a, a Vile Offering or a Temporal Sundering in your hand and not able to cast them, and so um, I don't think you can play too many Legendary Sorceries there. Um, Lazav is pretty awesome. Um, it it really is. So you, you can, like, turn your Lazav into, like, one of these other creatures in the graveyard, um, it's just a good good creature to have early and everything like that. Um, there are certainly times where you can like turn your Lazav into a Niv Mizzet, and that's awesome. Uh, another thing that I, was, that I was getting to say with this, so because of this, you definitely want a creature or a planeswalker in your graveyard, and that's what Charter Course uh, helps you do. You know, you get to draw two, and then you can discard away uh, one of like your Nicol Bolas or Niv Mizzet or something like that to put in your graveyard uh, to be able to get back. Same with Sarkin. Sarkin can help you loot uh, in that effect as well. So let's give it a try. Grixis Legends. Yeah, yeah, have two Niv Mizzet on the field. That is that's always fun. We've done that probably probably two or three times, having two Niv Mizzets on the battlefield, and it is crazy. No, Lazav cannot transform. Um, so if you if you copy Nicol Bolas with Lazav, you just get the front half, you just get the 4-4 flyer. Um, Well, I'm not going to ship the hand with pretty decent mana and a Thought Erasure. Oh, thanks, Balthor. Thanks for the kind words. Yeah, so welcome everybody coming over from the top eight. If you're new to the channel, um, yeah, the deck, the deck should be up on Stream Decker. Um, that should get you to the deck list. Yep. If you're new to the channel, of course, my name is Todd Stevens, and this is what I do each and every day. You can find me from 3 to 10 Eastern time streaming Magic the Gathering. Let's take this Goblin Electromancer. That thing, seem, that thing seems kind of scary. Uh, thanks, thanks for the sub there, Minimus. Um... Get some hype in the channel for Menemus with the sub there. Um, besides that, tomorrow and Wednesday I'll be streaming from 11 to 11, though, doing some 12-hour streams. No, my Judith! I'll just play this. 
Until you have lived as a statue, do you not know, so playing the Nicol Bolas certainly lets my opponent um, put their arc, you know, lets them put their the arc light phoenix in the graveyard very easily. I'm not sure if I want to necessarily do that. What's the other card we got? Charticors. So, we have the, um, I had the ability just to, like, not, not kill anything with Vile Offering and just go get their Arc Light Phoenix, but I don't, didn't feel like they were gonna, going to, um, I don't think they're getting their Arc Light Phoenix back immediately. I think I can kind of wait a minute and see if they play something like Electromancer or something else like that. Um, aggro can be tough. Uh, we're better against creature-based aggro than um, other kind of aggro decks. Our our worst matchup is basically burn. You know, like the mono red decks with like lots of burn spells. Those are probably our worst matchup, just in general. The choices we make. Wow, we have really gone through a lot of lands. We don't actually have like that many lands. All right, let's go get their phoenix. Lasso lands. Right, so 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 lands out of 24 cards. What do we have? We have 25 in the deck. So there's only 11 left. Oh, there's one over here too. Never mind. So that's 15. 15 lands. So there's 10 left. All right, there's there's the Sarkin. I guess I should. Dragon whispers of your demise. Should I thought erasure? Don't doubt my methods. I guess now we'll have more decision. Opt in chart a course. Return. I'm basically just making their hand, like not having opt makes it harder for them to get their phoenix back without having opt there. Drawing the shock <laughs> off of that is really annoying because there goes the there goes Sarkin. How could I have lost? Good news is that's like all of their resources the though. Has come. What version of Grixis do you think works best in the metagame? Um, I've had the most success with um, a Grixis discard deck. I'll see if I can find a, a link to it in my stream decker for you. We just have. Oh, we don't have. We have no creatures over here because they've lava coiled my creatures. The choices we make reveal who we are. Hmm. Oh, I should have put that in my graveyard. I could have put that in my graveyard and then made Lazava Niv-Mizzet. I have let my friends down. 
Sorry, I was I was looking for this other one and I, I just forgot about that. I probably should have just done that. Which I am not finding it. Grixis, discard. There it is. Yeah, they would have bolted it. Which is a good point. You know, I would have drawn the card um, and gotten the trigger, but that's probably not good enough. And so that the fact that they, they use the bolt anyway, that's certainly beneficial. Uh, so we do get to cra trade with the Crackling Drake. Perfect. Yeah, it probably does work better that way. I I didn't I didn't really expect them just to use to to just use their uh, beacon bolt on my one three, but the fact that they used the beacon bolt on the one three uh, certainly helped out. Okay, opponent did not want to play against us again. All right, we'll take the win. One and zero. Yeah, we already did draw every land in the deck. <laughs> ah. One and oh. All right. Uh, this is going to be a mulligan, unfortunately. A lot of good cards in the hand, but got to have our lands to be able to play them. I don't think we need that to keep that land necessarily right now. We'll probably draw other lands like that. Okay, I'm gonna start the video upload for For Gruel Frenzy. For YouTube. All right, as Canta down. Man, what's the what's the deal with drawing every single land in the deck these days? Let's go ahead and discard a, a land that they know about. I think it's okay that we have Water Grave and Blood Crypt. Um, don't think that's that big a deal. Yeah, Gruel Frenzy is worth playing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are we sure about twenty five? Maybe it's forty five lands. Who knows? Maybe we accidentally hit the add add land button twenty times by accident. Welcome to the stream, Chaos. Thank you so much for subscribing there. Okay, so that discovery there um, kept both cards on top. We'll see what they got going on over here. Unmoored Ego? Main deck. Um, think about taking Chupacabra, honestly. Uh, I obviously don't care about Ritual of Set. Don't really care about Unmoored Ego. Uh, Thought Erasure can take Vile Offering, but you know, whatever. I mean, Unmoored Ego could name, like, Nicol Bolas, make it a little harder to win. I'm going to take Chupacabra, though. Yeah, 
No, you have, you have a good point there about uh, Mono Blue being a real skill intensive deck that's kind of difficult to pilot, and um, that's, a, that's a good point. We have. Uh, we've kind of seen that with, with even just some of the Mono Blue, blue players that we've played against, not, not necessarily playing the best. Hooray! Something to do. I am Karn. What's up, Karn? I haven't I haven't played the Jeskai Angels deck yet. Um, it's gonna be it's a donation deck um, that I'm gonna get to whenever the person that donated for it is here. Um, doesn't look like they're here right now, and so may play that later on tonight, or if not tomorrow, is the plan there. What was lost is now returned. So we've seen 11 lands this time out of our 25 already. Squee! How's it going, Squee? So Eldritch Reborn's going to be tough. Um, looks like they get get back either, either Karn or uh, Thief of Sanity are the best options. Oh no, Thief of Sanity we exiled. Doom Whisperer is going to be difficult to beat. <laughs> now we're only playing 25, but it hasn't seemed like it. Do you think I'll ever play Eldrazi Tron and Modern again? Probably not. Uh, no, no real plans of playing Modern. Um, you know, I just play Arena here in Standard every day. Cool, yeah, it'll probably be tomorrow. With honor. Probably be tomorrow, Hogs. You may regret that choice. We would really like to draw a Yogmoth's Vile Offering. That's like our, you know, that's our best draw step. Kill their, kill their Doom Whisperer, um, and, you know, put whatever into play on our side. Put a Squee into play. So their Karn could get uh, Discovery Dispersal, and they could Dispersal my Niv-Mizzet. This will aid us. Uh, but of course, we trigger Niv-Mizzet to draw a card when that happens. So we don't have to necessarily discard the Niv-Mizzet. We can discard the other card we draw. Wait. Oh, no. Uh, this is the ping ability. I guess I'll ping Karn. It is best if you stop. No, I'm doing the... Unfortunately, we don't have the extra... The extra mana to be able to, to chart a course as well. That'd be nice to be able to chart a course here. Um, Yeah, opponent just cast on where do you go on Squee. Just get the Squee out of there. Um, I'm doing the, the constructed event. Uh, you know, traditional constructed event where you... Pay a thousand gold, you play until you win five or lose two, and so that's what I do with the different decks that I'm playing and everything. No, 
Nazgod getting that re-sub in for the fourth month already. Thank you so much, Nazgod. I do appreciate that. Sub number 14 on the day. One away from cracking our next pack. All right, next game. Don't have any cast downs for Doom Whisperer. Oh, 143. <laughs> Whoops. Mobby. Hey, Pens fan. I don't know if there's a whole lot for us to do here. You know, I could see, like, negate. Uh, being okay. Um, I don't think Judith is going to be too great. I'm not sure, like, you know, how much I want, like, these cards. I could see both of these, like, doing pretty well or, like, not very much. But maybe, we, maybe let's just try going with the Thief of Sanities. Um... Instead of Judith and Squee. And a coil. Hostage Taker, it's going to be like really expensive to like resolve Hostage Taker... And then ha not, and then have them not have a removal spell for Hostage Taker. Um, you know, like, like f for example, if we're doing Doom Whisperer, we'd have to have nine mana to be able to take a Doom Whisperer and cast it, which you know that's just so much mana. It right, looks like we're mulliganing again. Yeah, last game we had a one lander, also we had a mulligan. Um, Otherwise, we, like, Hostage Shaker the Doom Whisperer and just hope to untap with it. Don't think this is really a, a Hostage Shaker matchup. Hey, Sultai Ascendant. Played Mardu Angels at Standard Showdown. Uh, didn't lose a game even on a mold of five one game. Love the deck. Thanks. Oh, man, dude, that's awesome. Didn't even lose a, a game at all. That's awesome. Am I hyped for the new mulligan rules? Not not really. Um, but to be fair, you know, I haven't played any games with the new mulligan rules yet. So I don't I don't want to. So I don't want to be too hard on them or anything. when We haven't. You know, I don't know exactly how they'll play out. Um, but I'm not really too excited. I, I like the mulligan rule, how it is. So, of course, my, my plan before was to play the Sarkin here on turn three. I took the campaign because of how that um, can just get out of control over time. But and then drawing the Thief of Sanity, I decided to get that thing going. Problem is I don't really have any mana now. Hmm. What happened to having 40, 40 lands in the deck?
Okay, yeah, you replace Immortal Sun with Angrath. I, I think that's a pretty good change. Um, yeah, Angrath's real good, real good these days, so I, I like that change. Alright, all should born start doing your thing. Okay, this is looking good. Kind of set everything up. So now, third chapter of Eldritch Reborn puts... Um, puts Niv Meza back into play, and then we Vial Offering away their Dream Eater. Um, and get something else like Thief or Sarkin or something else. Let's go get... Let's go get Niv. I guess this is kind of risky. If they, if they just drew Counterspell. Let's go get... If they drew a Counterspell off the campaign, I guess I could have just gotten Chupacabra and been safe. Oh, I mean, even if they counter it, I still have the Niv in play. So that's not even that big a deal. I still have the 5-5. Five five. Never mind. It's not really that risky. Certainly a good draw step they had last turn, though, of, like, the campaign to get rid of my search for Escanta and then Contempt for the Niv. Certainly a good draw. Um, not sure it'll be good enough, though. We were so far ahead already with that Eldritch Reborn and Vile Offering combo. Um... <laughs> Please run. A chase stokes the forge. No fire, no steel. Get him, thief. I battle for the forces of good. Oh. Good job, Karn. Say hello what to about my battle with the forces of good. Yeah, Thief is so insane if you get to attack with it. I'm actually, like, pretty glad that Thief does not play lands also. I think Thief is at, like, a really good power level for where it's at right now. You know, I, I think that if it got to play lands also, it may be a little too good. All right, I'm going to take out one of these. I'm going to take out another Lava Coil and play it a Negate. Let's do that. I felt like I had too many lava coils there. I, you know, if my opponent has Thief of Sandy, I really, I'm really going to want a lava coil for it. But besides that, I don't really need a lava coil for anything else. So yeah, they have they have like you know 
Thief Sandy on turn three, we could certainly be in trouble. Let's hope that's not the, the case. Hey, Zerf, Sunday's going really good. You know, just fired up the stream not too long ago. Um, we're three hours into the stream now. And, uh, yeah, we had Gruel Frenzy. It was pretty sweet. Got to play a, a fun deck there. And we're now playing some uh, Grixis Legends, a deck that I certainly enjoy playing. So here we go. Alright, go ahead and chart a course and discard this here. Blood Crypt. Shivan fires in the sideboard for some of the aggro decks. Like it's I I want the cheap removal against decks like mono blue, mono white, those kind of decks. Um especially mono blue where it can kill a one drop you know one for one kill a one drop um otherwise uh it can also you can kick it to get rid of a tempest gin uh kind of thing so yeah the ego named sarkin i really i, I want it to name sarkin i do not want it to name like nickel bolus or niv mizzet or one of my better cards sarkin's just kind of whatever like i'm you know, if they, like, them spending a card and three mana just to have me cycle these two cards away, um, I am very happy with. Okay, they did name Niv-Mizzet, so that's, I'd rather them name Sarkin, but still, there's a good chance that we just play this game and we'd never draw, um, and we would just never draw those niv Mizzets. so they still just spent a card to like, you know, potentially remove like two of the bottom cards in our library. Get him, Nikki B. Yeah, that could be, that could be pretty good. Matthew, yeah, that's a good that's a fun idea. Yeah, yeah, they do have removal spells for Niv also. So basically, this kind of matchup is just, just pretty unnecessary to have on Mordigo in the deck. He told me I'd madness. <laughs> what madness? Babes Belcher, getting that sub in for the third month. Welcome back to the channel, Fabes. Thank you so much. Sub number 15, y'all know what that means. That means we are going to be cracking open a pack after this one. It will be pack time. Do I want, I guess I probably want Karn. Could take Thief of Sanity. Hmm. Karn or Thief? Y'all are saying Thief? Alright, let's go Thief. Are y'all saying that maybe I should just just play Angrath and waited? Um, that's pretty annoying. A Night Vale Predator can't kill that thing. So if I if no I minus, I can put like Karn back into play, 
But then my Nicol Bolas has three loyalty, and if they their third chapter, they get Chupacabra, kill my thief. The predator with the three loyalty kills my Nicol Bolas. Um, the ten damage doesn't do anything. I know what must I want to just refill done. my hand. Uh, I don't want to attack. This thing has death touch. So if I attack, the predator trades. So uh, that's why I'm not attacking into the death touch creature. That was the thing that I really did not want them to have was another Eldest Reborn. That was certainly the the thing I really did not want them to have. Perfect. I fight with a dragon's rage. Final offering was perfect. Um, so yeah, it doesn't matter if I if I discard Angrath, it's like it's gonna it's gonna go anyway. Like if I I could loot it away, whatever card I get would would go away anyway. That just doesn't really matter. If I did not transform Nicol Bolas previously. Um, then I have to worry about, uh, then, then like with their third chapter of Elvish Reborn, they could have got Chupacabra to kill Nicol Bolas. This is going to be tough here. How am I surviving a Night Vale Predator? Like what, have, what am I doing here? Like, what, should I have just blocked? No, because I need this Nickel Bowls to kill the Doom Whisperer. I'll show you unhinged. This power is incredible. Tree meter. I think my options are like Chupacabra to kill the Doom Whisper or Dream Eater to bounce the Doom Whisper. I can't really bounce the Eldest Reborn. Oh, but if I if I don't bounce Eldest Reborn, I'm dead. Yeah, if, if they they can just Eldest the Yeah, they can just go get back Angrath and I'm dead. So I'm just kind of dead no matter what I do here. I guess I'll keep the coil. No, we don't need to keep the coil. Yeah, it's, it's possible our opponent just misses it. But yeah, we, we should be dead here. I mean, if they just take Angrath and steal Dream Eater, we die. Hey, Dr. You're Pez. just fuel for the fires of freedom, Kerr. I don't think I had a better option. Your crew for my freedom. The last turn. <laughs> it's possible that like two turns ago, I just really needed to just have Nicol Bolas block the, the Predator, um, and that taking the damage from it continually. Um, or that like whenever I drew two with the Nicol Bolas, I needed just to bite the bullet and get something else in play and let Nicol Bolas die. Um... Yeah, I probably needed to just to uh, to do that. I think like whenever I drew the two cards, I need to bite the bullet earlier. 
If I would have dead 10 damage to the Doom Whisper, um... Yeah, maybe I'm not dead to that. Anyway, um... We are, uh, got to our 15th sub, so let's crack open this pack. So that would have been my turn six that I could have unloaded and graph. What did I play instead? Oh, I think I did. I did. Um, I killed his Chupacabra and put Thief of Sanity in play with uh, Yogmoth's Vile Offering. That turn I could have played. Um, I could have played and graph that turn. Yeah, go ahead, Chris. No, if I didn't die there, it would have just stayed on. Oh, when, when the Angrath, exp okay, yeah, when the Angrath effect uh, would, it would still go back to me. Um, I was the one controlling it at the time. Uh, yeah, if if that Angrath minus was not lethal, uh, the Angrath would have gone back to me. Or sorry, the, the Dream Eater would have gone back to me. Even though I'm not like the owner of the card, I'm still the controller. It's yeah, it's weird. I've I've tried that before. The main reason why I know that is because I've tried that before with Angrath as like being an only out kind of thing of like trying to to steal like my own card back. Um, but it doesn't work. So the, the bad part about having this uh, specific set of lands that we have here with Catacomb, Dragon Skull Summit, Mountain, there's not a way to play Thought Erasure on turn two. Hmm. So my options either Search for Escanta or Lava Coil. If we coil, we're coiling the Land of War Elf. Um... There's not really a you know anything like super important on like for four mana, like mostly they're gonna just like they're probably playing like Jade Light here anyway. So I don't think we'd need to to coil the Elf this turn. Yeah, sure, Traces, whatever. I would be more worried about coiling the Elf this turn to keep them off of Vivian, but I think since we have Thought Erasure, I think I just want to Thought Erasure. Crisis and find. Um, yeah, Judith is just another. It's another legendary creature to help turn on your Yogmas Vile offerings, um, and everything. And it's, it's a, it's just kind of a, you know, it's just a decent card. It's annoying for control decks to. Or not, sorry, for control decks, but for aggro decks to kind of deal with. So why discard a creature that is a mediocre play next turn when they have a find in hand? Um... I'd rather them have a better turn later on in the game than a mediocre turn next game. We're behind because we're casting Thought Erasure and stuff like that, and our opponent's just playing creatures. I would rather them, like with our life total, I'd rather them have a better play uh, later on in the game than the mediocre play right away. I'm going to be coiling this Krasis. I believe. So basically I'm just like, I just want my opponent to be slowed down, which is why I took the crisis over the find. Let's get these things out of here. Uh, 
Uh, Boros is, yeah, it's, it's still a little bit in the metagame. You don't see Boros a, a ton. But it's still around. Um, I don't like Tesa, and I don't like two unbreakable formations. Like, maybe one unbreakable formation. At least they only made it a 4-4. They could have made it a 5-5. Five five. Um... Yeah, they could have gone 5-5. Five five. We don't have the three red sources for niv -Mizzet right now. Good choice. Now we do. Nope, no Jaya's emulating Inferno. I probably should have just made a, a token with Karn. I didn't really realize we're at six. I should have just made a token. Doing all the other things. Um, Midnight Reaper is a good card to replace with for that deck, or just early removal. Like, like you don't really have like like uh, cast down. Uh, get some two mana removal in there. Um, another option. Can I have that vial offering, please? Rude. Yeah, you're welcome, Chris. Alright, so bad news, we have to chump lock with Niv. Good news, we get to chump lock with Niv. We're not dead. I am really surprised our opponent didn't keep that Harpooner, honestly. They really should have kept that Harpooner. Like, we, we have it here that we're gonna just, we're just gonna be minusing and getting Niv back. Your patience is rewarded. Well... Can I even get Niv? Let's see, do you, what do you have over here? Do you have... Any chupacabra or anything like that? No. What do I got? I got a Judith and a Nikki B. Stop stop having my Ascanta. Really glad they didn't keep the harpooner. The best deck to climb with, um, 
depends on like what format you're talking about with like you know best of one or best of three best of one i just don't i don't play best of one so i, I don't really have a, a real good answer there um for that um best of three i do think soul tie is just kind of the best deck to be playing with that okay so they're just going to cast down their crisis it doesn't really doesn't really affect the niv mizzet coming in so just discarding the cast down so now a karn token Of course. Sure. All right, so let's get the melody. I like the Ritual of Sets, and I like the Hostage Takers. Those are the cards that I'm wanting here. Um, take out Squeezel. Judith. Am I taking out Lazav also if I'm bringing in these Ritual of Sets? What am I doing with you, Lazav? Um, what do I want to do with you, Lazav? Yeah, you can change Lazav's CMC if, if we do copy um, one of our other things. Which is true. We can't get it out of Ritual Asset range. Yeah, Lazav can just like block some early things and stuff too. Problem is, if we're keeping Lazav, what, what am I taking out? I'm just gonna cut. I'm gonna cut him. I don't really see other things to cut. I'm gonna trim a Sarkin and a search for a Scanta as well. Don't really see other things that I necessarily want to cut. Could could just not play hostage takers. I don't. I don't really like that idea. Okay, so after this, um, after this league. Um, when this league ends, which may be after, you know, maybe after this match, um, we'll have to see. Uh, I'm going to be doing a new thing called Twitch Bounties, um, which, and so I'm going to be doing that between, between decks here, um, and so I'd really appreciate if if you stick around for that. It's basically, um, hey TJ Chaos, got on time, got in line right in, on time. Uh, basically, you're gonna spend uh, three or four minutes. Um, I'm gonna play, you know, basically instead of like playing an ad whenever I like to go use the restroom or anything, I'm gonna just just do the the bounty, which is. Um, Disdainful Stroke. Let's keep this. Which is just another ad, um, but it's going to be, we're going to be doing Dollar Shave Club. Um, going to be playing that. Really the, the big reason why I'm doing this is um, because it, it's more lucrative. Like just for spending three or four minutes doing this Twitch bounty, um, I'll be making more than I normally do for a normal day of streaming. So... I would appreciate if y'all just wouldn't mind watching like the little clip. Like, so what we need to do is just watch the clip and then uh, talk about it for just a minute. Um, and so yeah, they said like so just a few so just a couple minutes. Uh, be just talking about 
Dollar Shave Club will play the clip and see what they got here and stuff. So um, the thing is, though, if I have like less than 500 viewers, I won't get won't get paid anything. So it is paid on how many people are, are in here. So I would appreciate if you just spend a couple minutes you know, not leaving the channel after this league. Of course, if we win this match, it'll be later on, but just after the league. Um, all right, I'm going to decline here. Because I don't, so I don't need this fifth mana right now. Because I'm going to hostage take the chupacabra. I don't need the the fifth mana currently, so I'm going to just keep the Ascanta there. Yeah, they have yeah, they have a, a few other products and everything like that. So the the Twitch bounties are are a um are going to be a, a really good like potential source of income for me uh for doing that um for doing them. They're not they're not like always available like I don't know how many will be available like maybe one a day or something it's just like if a bounty you know if basically if a bounty comes up on on the bounty board then I can play it and so on so that'll be something that'll just kind of be a between deck thing um it'll like change the the label of the stream to being like you know hashtag sponsored there for for the couple minutes that we spend and that's it not too difficult, um, but like I said, for just doing that, uh, it's certainly worth it for being a full-time streamer. This doesn't pay a whole lot of bills, but that will help out. All right, anyway, so we, we got game two there pretty easily. Our opponent drew lots and lots of lands, so that was a big part of why we won that game. We saw Negate, Disdainful Stroke, um, some difficult cards for us to kind of deal with in general there. Um, maybe I don't need these hostage takers. So yeah, thanks, thanks guys, thanks for the, yeah, thanks for doing that. Cool, thanks 1960 pal, yeah, so just, just a couple minutes. Uh, you know, like, I'll, I'll just play, like, the commercial here, and then we'll talk about the commercial afterwards, talk about the company. Uh, see if anybody has any like experience with it or anything. Judith main Judith is main deck. Uh, I have sideboarded it out because of the bringing in the ritual sets. Okay. Hey, what's up? I made a new deck. It's Boros amulet focused on comboing amulets and heroic reinforcements. That sounds pretty sweet. Get to copy your. Heroic reinforcements with primal amulet. Um. Hmm. I kind of want to take the Vivian Reed, even though they have duress. Which is like, so if they, they duress, they take my Angrath. But if I take their Vivian, I kind of take the Vivian read. Yeah, I know they have no black right now for duress, but they'll they'll probably, I, I assume they're going to draw black before we actually play Angrath. Yeah, I'm going to take Vivian. Vivian's just so good. All right, and if Angrath's gone, I don't have any other legendary creature right now and probably won't for a while. So I'm just going to put that card over there. That'd be really nice if we can get to Angrath before they cast Duress. It's just pretty unlikely. Our actions determine the course of his. Yeah, the cost for a deck donation is twenty dollars. You can. Um. Find more info about that down below in the info panel. 
Really wish we were playing first where we could have the five mana now and play the Angrath. And there they go. They they found the the black mana just in time. Good choice. Um why Judith over Azareth? I kinda like Judith as a as a card more. I think it's one it's gonna be easier to cast. I think yeah, like the the double black is kind of difficult whenever we're focused on blue and red because of niv -Mizzet. Um. Yeah, Hawkeye, he's like around like 11 to 12. You may regret that choice. Hmm. This isn't going very well for us with our opponent having, um, with our opponent having Karn out forever. Doesn't look good for us. Yeah, they're they're definitely pulling ahead with activating Karn forever. Return. Okay. I'm glad they used the... I am glad they used the finality uh, before they played the Krasis, because if they played the other Krasis first, then I hostage taker the other Krasis, and then I'm, I'm certainly uh, in line for another finality, or for like the finality there. I'll make use of that later. I don't I don't think it's probably good to give them crisis ever. I don't know. The good part about giving them the land over the land of war elf. Well, if they have another land in hand, I should give them the land war off. I want their hand to be... Uh, like, I don't want them to have many cards when I have, like, Nicol Bolas in my hand. Maybe I should should have gave them land war off, because then they're, they're definitely just playing the land war off. Hmm. They discarded Krasis. Interesting. What was lost is now returned. All right, I need to get the. Gruel Frenzy deck. We can get that up on YouTube. Okay, you mind if I do some type in here? The time has come. February twenty-fourth. 
So I can shock there, and I can just play the Krasis and draw one card. Um, but I don't, I don't think that if we just play Krasis and draw one card, we're really beating our opponent. Um, and so I'm going for the higher upside play of being able to draw three. It is, of course, a little risky with them having so many cards. They have a removal spell, but... But well, that's our, our best chance of winning for how much value this Karn has gotten. You know, like, they've just activated the Karn, you know, six times or whatever. I've gotten, like, six cards from it. Are you certain of your decision? Uh, no. I'm really not certain which Jade Light I should give you. Could be either one. Okay, you're not you're not helping me type stuff. All right, I think this is gonna be it here. All right, Hawkeye, can you move? I need to use the keyboard. Can you move, buddy? I know you don't want to. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, Karn Karn just took over that game. We did okay with the Hawkeye donation deck. We won two of the five matches. We played it in five matches, but we we played it in like the just kind of like match against anybody queue, you know, because it's a, it was just a cat tribal deck, um, and we actually won two of the five matches. So, all right, well, didn't do as well this time with Grixis Legends. Um, was in our league. Um. I know the Judith and the Squee are like the 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 two worst cards in the deck, um, but you know like they're basically just like the legends that that help you with vile offering, and sometimes it's good to have like the ch it's good to have the cheaper legends, uh, where you can like you know have eight mana later on in the game and play one and play an offering. But honestly, like maybe maybe that's just not worth it. Maybe these slots need to be upgraded to something else. You know, not not sure what, but. Something else there, because uh, yeah, they're not they're not super strong. Um, but Captain Lannery Storm over Judith, I actually kind of like that. I've I've actually been just always, not always, but I've been really impressed with Captain Lannery Storm and Nia Legends quite a bit. Maybe that over Judith. There. I do not stream modern anymore. No. Um. Yeah, so if you play Psy, you basically have to play Treasure Map also. Um, Psy, Psy is just not... You need a lot more artifacts for Psy, I think, than just even just Treasure Map. Um, I do like Lannery Storm, though. Yeah, that card is good. That That's another way that you can potentially get to early Niv-Mizzets. I do like how it does ramp into, you know, you play Lannery Storm on three, you can Vile Offering already on four. That's pretty nice. Um, so that could that could do some stuff there. Yeah, I'm, I'm willing to make that, that change. We did well with um, Judith. We did well before against decks like Mono Blue. Um, and Mono White and decks like that, like where whenever Judith dies, you get to ping other things. Even against Sultai, um, killing like some Land War Elves whenever you, you block with Judith. Um, yeah, Rona was in, Rona is what the card that I played last format. And Rona was okay. I replaced Rona with Judith um, whenever RNA came out. This was the card that I played last format. And it was fine. It, it had its spots of like doing something it usually ate a removal spell because opponents didn't know exactly what it did and would and thought it was confusing so but there were times where um like a search risk canta got like discarded earlier and then on turn five i could play rona exile the search risk canta then play the s canta immediately and so like that was pretty cool bladewing was another card that i started with because like with the sarkins um and everything, but just kind of eventually moved away from them and, and moved towards like these other planeswalkers. Um, 
Honestly, I think I like Mass Manipulation more than Entrancing Melody, honestly. I, I do like that change. Because basically the, this slot is for Sultai anyway, and I think I'd rather have Mass Manipulation gain, gain control of the Planeswalkers. Like the, cause, yeah, actually, I think I just like that change. That's a good change. Have that instead of Entrancing Melody. And be able to take their Karn or whatever. Especially with having like Hostage Taker for the creatures anyway, how we were just sitting there with like nothing to do against the Planeswalker. I like that. So yeah, there's a couple small changes that we can try for next time. Alright, so if you're watching this later on, on YouTube, of course don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Uh, but thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next video.